Cruz nurse has been arrested, accused of sexually assaulting an emergency room patient. That's what investigators say Peter Dunn did, working as a nursing assistant at Dominican Hospital. He's now on administrative leave. Tonight, there is a lot of concern coming out of the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office. More tonight from Action News reporter Felix Cortez, who's live in Santa Cruz. Felix. And Dan, the biggest concern coming out of the sheriff's office is they believe Dunn may have more victims out there. 46-year-old Peter Dunn of Santa Cruz arrested and charged with three felony counts of sexually assaulting a female patient at Dominican Hospital. Dunn is a nursing assistant in the hospital's ER. And this particular case revolves around a sexual assault that occurred to a patient uh, under his care while he was working. The investigation has revealed that there was a portion of time where uh, the two were alone and that's when the uh, assault occurred. Dunn was just recently arrested but had been under investigation since late March when the allegation was first made. We want to ensure that our investigation is thorough and complete before we move forward. Um, it's a very serious allegation and we want to make sure that we have every piece of information that's available to us to substantiate that. Sheriff's deputies say the nursing assistant has worked at Dominican since 2015, but detectives believe Peter Dunn may have had access to additional patients outside the hospital. The behavior and the pattern of events that led up to this assault uh, has caused our investigators to think that there's likely uh, other people that have fallen victim to this. Uh, all of the circumstances indicate that this is not just an isolated event and that there's a potential that there's uh, additional victims that haven't come forward yet. Well, Dominican Hospital released a statement this afternoon that reads in part, we take these allegations very seriously. While we have strong patient safety policies and procedures already in place, we are constantly reviewing all practices to identify any opportunities for improvement. The hospital said the allegations against Don are extremely distressing and they have put Don on administrative leave. Dan, Aaron. Thank you, Felix. I want to show you Peter Dunn one more time. If you have any information regarding the nursing assistants or assistant, I should say, or believe you could be a victim, you are encouraged to call the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Department. Law enforcement from Santa Cruz and Santa Clara counties are searching for a man who stole several guns. Investigators say 48 year old Ricky Mendoza parked a stolen Ford pickup near the Summit store in Los Gatos today. He took off into the woods when deputies tried to talk to him. Deputies searched the area with a canine officer and a drone, but did not find him. Mendoza is considered armed and dangerous. The trial for the man charged with the murder of 13 year old Christina Williams has been del delayed until next year. Charles Holyfield was set to go on trial in October, but today a judge delayed it until March. There were s several issues involving discovery in the case. Defense attorneys are expected to ask for a change of venue at a hearing next month. Monterey County DA is pursuing the death penalty against Holyfield, despite Governor Newsom's moratorium on capital punishment. CHP is investigating a fatal car crash happened around 9 o'clock tonight near Larkin Valley Road in Santa Cruz County. We don't have a lot of details on this accident yet, but CHP has confirmed that one person was killed. There is a hard closure at Larkin Ridge at White Road right now. CHP is investigating where the drugs or alcohol were factors. Wildfire coverage of fire burning in Boulder Creek being held at 10 acres tonight. The Deer Fire broke out at about 2.30 near Deer Creek and Bear Creek Roads. Cal Fire says forward progression has stopped, but they will remain on scene overnight. One firefighter sustained a minor injury. It shut down Bear Creek Road at Highway 9. That has since been reopened. In San Benito County, they're making progress on a wildfire there. They're calling it the Antelope Fire. It's 167 acres with 95% containment. Broke out at 3.30 yesterday afternoon near Panoche and New Idria Road. The cause under investigation. There's a man making it his personal mission to put out illegal campfires along the Big Sur coast. His name is Brendan Shave. He lives in Big Sur, says he's been dousing fires all summer. He says many he finds aren't being watched and are burning near dry grass. Campfires are legal at campgrounds, but patrols uh, at the sites, uh, well, they're off the grid. The community is behind him. They've raised $4,000 to support the patrols. He says he's considering adding a water tank and a dump to his truck. 
Hurricane Dorian is finally leaving the Bahamas and moving its way toward the Florida coastline. The first aerials over the Bahamas show the complete devastation left behind by this monster storm. At least seven people were killed and that number is expected to rise. Prime Minister says 60% of the homes were damaged in Marsh Harbor and at least one community was completely wiped out. Even as the storm scrapes by Florida's east coast, more than 2 million people in Florida, Georgia and the Carolinas have been warned to evacuate. Police in Savannah, Georgia have ordered an overnight curfew. Shelters have been opened and homes and businesses all boarded up. Hundreds of flights have also been canceled. Chief Meteorologist Lee Solomon has been tracking this storm. He's here now with more and now the sharp turn will likely begin or we'll it, see. It has begun. It's one of the more interesting hurricanes I've ever seen I yeah. mean, in terms of the strength, how long it stayed over the Bahamas. How slow it moved. Yeah. I mean, how it's... slow and just how devastating it was, you know, with those Cat 5, but a strong Cat 5 too. We're not yeah. talking 150. We were talking 185 at one point and then just kind of halted right as it got to Florida. They're getting winds of about 40 gusting to 50, 55, and occasional gust to 60. So they're in tropical storm force conditions. It's, again, moving really slow, but at least it is moving right now at about 7 miles an hour, down to a cat, too. But, again, now the wind field's expanding, and that's typical when hurricanes start to spin down a little bit. The wind field actually expands, so more people get affected, although the winds aren't as strong. They're still getting those tropical storm force winds. You can see the outer bands over parts of Florida. It's about 80 miles east northeast of Cape Canaveral right now, which is right there. And you can see the center of it still well defined. We will have a hurricane for several more days at least. And the track again takes it to the north, but slowly again, another 48 hours before it may reach the Carolinas. This is 5 a.m. on Thursday. And then you can see it's still slow moving as it gets to the Outer Banks and then eventually off the eastern seaboard as a category one and may even just uh, swing by Halifax, Nova Scotia. So we'll be talking about Dorian for a while. Here's the wind field. Again, the strongest winds out over the center from about 40, 50 miles out from the eye wall and then buffeting the coast right now. They'll take a pretty good hit in the Carolinas, even if it doesn't make landfall. They'll see winds of 40, maybe gust to 70 throughout Charleston and then up to Myrtle Beach. It'll again bring a lot of rain too, a lot of flooding, 5 to 15 inches of rain over the next 24 to 48 hours. So we'll be talking about Dorian right through probably Thursday, if not a little bit longer. All right. Thank you, Lee. New tonight, police say that the man that rammed the gate at Oakland Airport was from Aptos. His body was found in the San Francisco Bay yesterday. He's been identified as 42-year-old Brian Hirano. On Sunday, an Alameda County Sheriff's deputy tried to pull him over. They say he took off along an airport access road, rammed a security gate, drove onto the tarmac, then ditched the car and jumped in the water cause of death has yet to be released. Also new tonight, a controversial bill requiring more oversight of medical exemptions for vaccines now closer to becoming law. It passed the assembly yesterday in Sacramento. This was written after accusations that some doctors were offering exemptions for money. Anti-vaccine advocates upset over the bill have disrupted assembly hearings. Amendments to the bill now need to be approved by the Senate. It then would move to the governor's desk. In our Project Community Report, our year-long look at the people and programs of the Central Coast that bring us together. Tonight, teachers getting ready for a very special history lesson. Every single 8th grade student in Monterey County is getting an all-expense paid trip to see the hit show Hamilton at the Orpheum Theater in San Francisco.